I am Tremise Carter, and I am the Youth Relations and Organizational Equity Manager at Hullspire. I am joined by my co-host, Erica Ayers, who is the School Wellness Consultant with the Division of Nutrition, Physical Activity, and Obesity Prevention at DHEC. Additionally, I provide staff support for the school's network, and Erica is the Executive Director of the South Carolina Governor's Council on Physical Fitness. I would like to thank one of Hullspire's sponsors, Healthy Blue. Thanks, Tremise, for getting started, and thanks, y'all, for joining us this afternoon. So, like Tremise mentioned, I'm the School Wellness Consultant at the Department of Health, but I'm also the Executive Director for the South Carolina Governor's Council on Physical Fitness. And the mission of the Governor's Council is to support the health and well-being of South Carolinians through the promotion of physical activity. Their current focus is on supporting student health and well-being through healthy eating and active living, similar to the school's network with the whole spire. So that's why Tremise and I and the school's network and the Governor's Council are coming together to work collaboratively to meet our missions. And this webinar series is an example of that. The purpose in the webinar series is to provide opportunities, provide information, education, examples on how schools and communities can enhance their collaboration with one another using the whole school, whole community, whole child model as a framework to support student health. And why we are doing this is because we're looking at our data. We know that in South Carolina, student health is not where it should be. We know that most students aren't meeting the physical activity guidelines of 60 minutes a day. We know that 50% um, or half of our South Carolina students do not have good cardiorespiratory fitness, meaning that their heart and their lungs do not function at the capacity that they should. We also know that one in three of our South Carolina students are overweight or obese, and that these students are at a higher risk of developing a lifelong chronic illness, such as hypertension, diabetes, or cardiovascular disease, not just when they're adults, but also in their childhood, which could impact the quality of life for the rest of their lives. So what are we doing about this data? How are we addressing it? Uh, how are we making sure that our students have equitable opportunities to uh, be healthy and to be successful? We're working together. And like I mentioned earlier, we're using the whole school, whole community, whole child model to enhance that collaboration. So what does this look like in South Carolina? Well, uh, we just we went into this a lot deeper with our first webinar session, our panel session that was about a month ago, and that is on the whole Spire website if you didn't get a chance to check it out. And then today we're going to explore this a little bit more of what this model looks like in South Carolina with our panel from York County. So, Tremise, I'm going to hand it back over to you to discuss our agenda for the day and to introduce our panel. Erica. So as Erica mentioned, the last time we heard from a panel on the whole school, whole community, whole child framework and ways community coalitions in schools can collaborate to support student health. This time we're showcasing whole Spire York County in the York County School District. Today's agenda includes an overview of 5210. It includes also the coordinated school health advisory councils plus school improvement councils and advocacy on safe routes to school. Before we move on, we do have a poll. Please tell us which role best describes you. Okay, it seems that most people fall into the other category. However, we do have about 23% of district administrators and staff. We have about 22% folks on the call who are state stakeholders. We also have a representation of community stakeholders as well as school administrators. So thank you for completing that poll. Okay, so I would like to introduce our panelists. We have Dr. Dave Keeley, who's on the leadership team advocacy committee, and he is also the 5210 project leader for Hullspire York County. We also have Elizabeth Duda, who's on the leadership team advocacy committee and communications. She also is the co-chair for the Bike Head Plan Coalition of York County. So could you tell us what inspired you all to take action in York County to support student health? Well, it's my pleasure to be uh, on this call. And uh, what inspired me um, was the 
progress in the wrong direction of the childhood obesity epidemic uh, in our area. We um, use South Carolina Fitness Gram data and data from the Head Start centers in our area and track the um, progression of the epidemic. And um, that is, as I'm gonna show, was really the reason for um, getting started with, what a, with some action. And um, that led to um, some incorporation of existing uh, efforts, the Alliance for a Healthier Generation opportunity in the Rockville School District. And as I mentioned, the um, continuing to track um, as best we could elementary school um, BMI for age data. So next slide. Right here, I want you to just take note of two things. Uh, first, um, we have second grade um, and in the, in the blue is the combined overweight and obese. And you can see it's just over 30%, which is, as Erica Ayers mentioned, the statewide current um, fitness gram data shows about 33%. So, um, you know, back in 2016, 2017, um, that's where the second graders stacked up. But what's most important is how that number grew by 10 percentage points um, between second graders and fifth graders. Um, and, you know, it's also noteworthy that the increase of the orange bar um, is going up um, about at, maybe at a little bit faster rate for um, in the fifth grade category than the second graders. Next slide. So um, again, just know that what we're talking about mostly today um, at this point is pre-COVID and things that we were able to do um, you know, before our COVID changed a lot of things. Um, as our action, we've organized a, um, we were called Eat Smart Move More York County and now our new name is Holspire York County. And we organized a committee uh, to study uh, what might be a good strategy to take action. And we uh, landed on a um, national program that was piloted and shown to be evidence-based in the state of Maine called Let's Go 5210. And as you can see, uh, we drew on a cross-section of um, important uh, stakeholders and um, folks involved in education and healthcare. Next slide. So here's the logo uh, from, from Maine, uh, let's go.org. Uh, a lot of material there that uh, you can go and, and, and look at if what I say, you know, stimulates you in that direction. Next slide. The um, story as it unfolded in in York County uh, was at about the same time, the Charlotte metro area um, was also concerned and having conversations about what to do about childhood obesity. And uh, we were able to um, partner up with um, the, it, what is now Atrium Health System. And um, they and Holsbyer York County saw the value in the 5210 New Maine program and we got trained by folks from Maine and we launched a, um, a, a rebrand um, 5210 League. And you can see the, um, what the different numbers uh, refer to. Next slide. What is important with the experience in Maine um, was multi multiple sites. And so as part of our um, efforts, we, um, we tracked um, our efforts uh, to uh, follow what was done in successfully in Maine. Next slide. And um, 
course, the school site um, was front and center. Um, and you can see we have four school districts in York County. And um, initially, um, you can see we had um, one elementary school involved in York uh, and um, three in Rock Hill and four in Fort Mill. And, um, you know, we, we transitioned from um, a early pilot, the York and Rock Hill were pilots and we just trans transitioned all that over to the 5210 league. Next slide. We also um, paid attention to the community setting, and it, it was it's important uh, when you have um, you know health concern that um, leaders, other stakeholders in the community become aware. And so we uh, took the opportunity to uh, take the message of five two one zero the five two one zero league uh, to these key um, groups in our community. Next slide. And then the other key settings, um, early, uh, early uh, child development centers, um, and then the after school programs, uh, workplaces, and um, healthcare sites. Next slide. The partnership with the local school districts um, was very uh, much uh, driven and su to success by our conversations at the district level with the leaders. And we took those um, relationships that the 5210 committee uh, had um, and some of the members of the 5210 committee and um, we established a uh, important partnership with our, this, the uh, district administration uh, leaders. Next slide. And um, just to do a little um, shout out, uh, Sadie Carell um, was on our committee, uh, 520 committee, and she uh, was the lead or is the lead nurse for Rock Hill School District. Uh, Leticia Holt in York um, is the nutrition director. Jessica Cody has been involved with uh, Holspire York County. Um, on another grant project and is now serving on the Clover School District Board. And Roland Cabatting um, was um, the nutrition director and the chair for your Holspire York County. So um, just you can see how the success that we um, were able to achieve um, involved folks who were already involved with Holspire. Um, next slide. So um, when we're looking at, um, you know, what what can you do? What 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 are the key things uh, for you to know? Um, we had a shared community concern and a health priority of, uh, in terms of the obesity epidemic, particularly among children, and um, we took that shared concern and uh, educated other community leaders, stakeholders. Uh, enough to engage their interests. So this was a key, a key uh, part of our efforts. Next slide. And um, in in the school setting, um, we found that um, identifying champions, um, and in in in, um, in different school districts, it might be different. In, in Rock Hill School District, um, it was a combination of the lead nurse and um, the elementary um, director for elementary education. And in um, Fort Mill, who was the director for elementary education. And um, they facilitated important meetings uh, to where principals in the schools were brought on and board and, and got, got committed. And, um, and so it was mutual support um, and, and our efforts uh, reap um, you know, important benefits. Next, next slide. Um, I'm going to take a pause, Therese. I think you're going to set up the next poll for us before we transition into. Oh, nope, sorry. I am completely wrong. Sorry. 
that's my bad. I think we're wanting to go um, get into this the C Shack and SIC. Yes. There you go, Dr. Keeley. Yeah. Um, so, um, Holspire, York County has also um, had uh, important um, other um, initiatives that um, focused on um, the health and wellness of, of children. Um, and, you know, Holspire is, is um, very invested in healthy eating and active living as, of course, the 5210 initiative addressed. Um, but also, um, there are some other ways that um, we can uh, make, help kids be, um, be more active and eat healthier. Um, so you can see that um, with the C shacks, um, and in some districts is called a district wellness committee. Um, you know there are um, important things that that are part of um, that particular um, uh, entity, and then the school improvement councils um, are um, again federal and state mandated and. Um, you get the school level um, opportunity with community representation and um, public input. Next slide. So pre-COVID again, um, what we Pulsebuyer did, um, and we're going to call this top down. Um, when you um, we 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 got the from our four school districts, we got the uh, C Shack lead person um, to. We invited them to a meeting and served a light lunch, and we talked about um, some key um, ideas for um, healthier eating and active living. And so we in, engaged in a um, important effort for open community use of school playgrounds. Uh, we um, also um, had an amazing um, re, uh, success with healthy snacks in schools. Um, and it all kind of began because we um, created this uh, uh, relationship with the leads of the uh, CSHACs. And of course, the CSHACs recommend policy change and and that's where you get sustainability. Next slide. School improvement councils. Um, I should call these more grassroots, uh, where you're at the school level. And um, in, in the Rock Hill School District, uh, we were fortunate to have uh, the, um, the presence of, of school level wellness committees and um, in in one instance, I served on um, the School Improvement Council for Evanport Elementary in Rock Hill. And we had a uh, concern that the traffic need to be calm um, in approach to the school for children walking um, or riding bikes. And um, we were able to convene with the uh, State Highway Department folks and the local Rock Hill Transportation uh, coalition and Will Spire uh, representatives and school improvement council representatives, and um, at a at a hearing, um, it was determined that a safe um, crosswalk needed to be um, implemented um, and an expanded uh, school zone for uh, slowing the traffic and, uh, and for a large segment in front of the school. Um, another area that um, we've worked with um, educational gardens uh, in our area have waxed and waned, but um, we found that school improvement councils are a great uh, way to um, get buy-in from the principal and also the parent representatives on the school improvement council. And um, in one instance, um, we have now a, um, what's called a uh, education a sensory garden where uh, there's not only plants and vegetables um, for the kids to learn about and grow, but also
also uh, a space where they can, uh, in the course of a school day, go outside and be in the garden and experience um, sensory, all five senses being stimulated um, and helping to calm, uh, particularly teachers use that for calming. Um, next slide. So um, I'm going to stop here and um, I'm going to my colleague uh, Liz Duda uh, tell a further story um, of how um, we've used uh, community and um, collaboration uh, with Hull Spire in York County. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. That was all all good and interesting, Dr. Dave. I, Liz, before uh, you get just, started, yes. I wanted to jump in. Um, we do have one more poll um, with two questions. So first, we wanted to ask everyone, um, as a kid, how did you get to school? Was it by car, school bus? Did you walk or bike? Or did you use another mode of transportation? And we're getting responses from our second question as well. Um, how did your kid, how do your kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, and our neighbors currently get to school? So you can answer that one as well. And we'll take another second to get those responses. I don't get to chime in. So I'll say, I remember walking to school to one of my elementary schools across the street. That was fun. And then my high school, one of my high schools was around the corner. So I got to bike to high school and I got to bike to college. That was part of the joy of being in San Diego to be able to be outside and bike into college. I see some action in the chat too. My children take the bus and car. I remember walking to elementary school. So let's see what these responses look like. Um, it seems that most of us as children, we did ride a school bus or car, but we did have 22% that said they walked and the other 4% said other. Um, and then we do see an increase with car usage. Um, we have 67% now who said their either their kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, or neighbors get to school by car. 15% um, that say school bus and 11% that say that they walk or bike. So thank you all. And then another 7% that say other. And I think when we were planning and someone said something about scooters now are pretty popular for kids getting to school. Um, and I see some action in the chat. Um, some said other because of the weather, which is true. So thank you all. So I'll pass it back to you now, Liz, um, to talk to us about Safe Routes School. Sure, thank you. And actually, Tremise, I liked a question that you asked in the beginning, which was how did Dr. Keeley and I get involved in in um, in advocating for for you know and get involved in with the community level with the schools and so I wanted to say a little something about that too so I am a mother of three children right now I have one in high school one in middle school and one in elementary school early on I got involved in the school uh, school wellness committee at my child's elementary school and at, at that point is when I met the Fort Mill School District nutrition director and I had some concerns that I identified and and for full disclosure it was a lot of I felt that my kids were getting candy in too many places so the school so the, dis, the school district nutrition director directed me to eat smart move more york county and the first meeting I went to at eat smart move more york county was an advocacy committee held by uh, advocacy committee meeting held by Dr. Keeley and when I learned about the work that that he, he was doing in advocacy at at Eat Smart Move More York County, which is now Holspire York County, and what um, what all of the work that Holspire York County was doing that this community coalition, it encouraged me. It made me realize I wanted to get involved. So I didn't want to be just someone who complains about what is what I'm seeing happening. I saw that I could make a difference. So that's how I got involved with the whole Spire York County Coalition. I feel like Dr. Kelly has been a mentor and advisor and a friend to me. Um, and, and so so I've, I've continued to stay involved through there is how I got, how I learned about the Bike Ped Coalition of York County, which is another coalition that I'll be talking about um, as we go on to these slides. So so I've been fortunate to be able to, to build on what I've learned at the, at the community coalitions to try to help make a difference in the school. And I'd, 
I'd also like to pause and, um, and note, we did mention uh, Roland Kabating, so the, the past nutrition director, he was the former chair of now Holzfire York County. We do have Tammy Welch on this call, who is the Fort Mill School District nutrition director now, and she's a fantastic partner to Holzfire York County too. So, um, so those are a, a couple of things that I wanted to, to say as an introduction. So thank you for having me. Um, as you can see, this is the walk to school day slide. So my kids go to Tiki K Elementary School in the Fort Mill School District. And this school opened up in 2014. And they, um, at that time, the Tiki K Elementary School, uh, the PE teachers realized that they would like to do the annual bike, bike and walk to school days. And so I began to work with the PE teachers uh, to coordinate these three and three time annual events. And now they have developed into to, to um, monthly events. So now not only are we having them three times per year with the annual event, but we're having the, the new administration is having us do monthly family Friday walk bike to school days. So they found that these annual events were so successful that they wanted to encourage it more frequently. I'd say the reason why these annual events are so successful is because of the community interaction that they have. So we, um, we were guided by Safe Routes, the Safe Routes Partnership and Safe Routes to School, which you see on the screen. So the Safe Routes Partnership is a national nonprofit organization that, it, that is working to advance safe walking and rolling to and from schools in everyday life. So the goal is to improve the health and well-being of all races, of people of all races, of all income levels, all abilities, and the goal is to build healthy, thriving communities for everyone. So, so we worked with them to plan these days. They gave us guidance, um, and and so we've invited community members to participate in in our three time annual events. So I'd say the biggest draw is the coffee with a cop, which Tiki Elementary. Um, has a park right next door to it. So the police officers set up a tent in, in the gardens next door. And it is such a thrill for the kids to ride or so bike, walk, roll, uh, scooter, skate through the park and stop and get a cup. Their parents get a cup of coffee with the police officers. The kids get hot chocolate. And it's just such a neat interaction. Um, and so um, another thing is we invite other community members too. So we invite the city council, uh, the school board, and um, other, other community members. The TGK fire department often will be at the front door of the school and uh, welcoming the kids into the building. Uh, so the, the city puts it out into, into the newsletter often, and there's a flashing sign at the beginning of the city that says, walk to school day this Friday. So these are really fun events. Um, the, the PTO gets involved and promotes them and will hand out non-food goodies to the kids. So I'd say this is a really great event at, at held at Tiki K Elementary School. And I'll point out the, the third, so there, there are three um, annual events. Well, two, two national events and one was a South Carolina event. And uh, you can also see on the screen, Safe Routes to School South Carolina is now defunded, defunct, but we're, we're, we're continuing to do the third event that it promoted. If you are interested in doing this for your school, the next one is coming up next week. So check out the Safe Routes Partnership website and you can sign your, your school up and get their advice and input into it. Okay, that's what I'll share about this slide. In the next slide, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. So what is what we seek to do in these events is to promote values that are that are important to the school. And we've identified these as community. So we get the community involved, as I've described, and you can see the pictures here of the Coffee with a Cop event. We promote the physical activity and mental health, so the benefits of biking and walking to school. It's also good for the environment. Something that uh, people have expressed concern about in our community is, is crosswalk safety and bicycling safety. Can the, can the pedestrians get along with the bicyclists on the road? So we encourage parents to take this opportunity to teach your children uh, cycling, pedestrian, and crosswalk safety. So use use these events to, to work to work with them on on making sure they're walking and biking to school safely. And we joke that it's a shorter car line. That they, but, um, so that is a benefit. On um, there can be a long car line, so it's nice to see a shorter car line. 
Um, so, and we also want to make sure that's fun that um, people see if you, you're going to these annual events and now monthly events, this is something that you can work into your normal routine. So I've already discussed how we get the community involved. This slide is talking about the partnerships that we had. So something pretty neat in, uh, I saw in the school uh, administration's letter to parents last year, they, they cited these bike and walk to school days as, their, as a successful example of community partnerships that they have. Uh, then we, we work with the PTO, PTA to promote these events, school wellness committee. It was, it was when, when I was on the school wellness committee, uh, it was we who had planned and, and helped execute these events. We, I'm a member of the school improvement council, so, uh, or I had, I have been a member of the school improvement council. So I always make sure to update the school improvement council to let them know when these events are. And then, and those are other groups that we have invited to, to participate or get involved or promote it. Media sometimes comes out and takes pictures. I've uh, gone into the radio station, my son and I have gone into the radio station and talked about these events. So they really are exciting and generate interest. Thank you. So we can move on to the next slide. So the, those bike and walk to school days are, uh, are an example of a, of a happy, of a happy good, um, good outcome in our community. That, uh, so partnerships between schools and the community. This next one is, is also has a happy outcome. And this is one of our success stories. So I've mentioned the Bike Ped Coalition of York County and Holspire York County. We are um, we have worked together to support community members who were seeking to advocate for a continuous sidewalk to school. So we saw that someone had put online a petition to say that they needed a continuous sidewalk from their from multiple communities, so multiple neighborhoods, to two schools, two new schools that had been put in. And so we contacted the parent and said, learned her story and said, how can we support you? And so she said, can you help me get the word out? So we did. Uh, we promoted the petition and talked it up. And that petition grew very quickly from 100 to over 800 signatures. So then she was able to, um, she then went and spoke before uh, different people. So something that she wasn't sure of was who all should she be contacting? Who would be most effective for her to reach out to in order to, to make, make progress in getting this sidewalk to school? And so uh, we have the contacts at, at our, in our coalition. We have contacts, we have knowledge. So we introduced her to the right people, suggested the meetings that she should go to, helped her with her talking points. One thing that we did, we wrote a couple of articles that uh, or blog posts that we put on our website and that consolidated the information so people could go there to understand what was happening. The media could look at that uh, and the media then did do a couple of stories on this. And um, so, so we helped draw attention. We helped her make connections. We helped her make public comments. One meeting that she went to was the municipal planning organization. And you may know that includes transportation officials, mayors, county leaders. These were the people who were able to approve the plan and these are the people who can access the funding. So whereas she said when she was meeting with people, it was, no, we can't do it. It's too expensive. I'm not, uh, you gotta talk to someone else. In the end, uh, with, with the dialogue between the appropriate parties, which in this case were the county, the town, the school district, and the South Carolina Department of Transportation. People came together and did say this could be a priority. They were able to get the funding, and now there is a plan in place for the continuous sidewalk to be to be to be um, installed. So, um, so she we uh, and also we helped her identify other parents too that that took on um, the role of communicator in their neighborhoods. So. Ultimately, our coalitions wrote a letter of support for the funding and and backed her request. And you know, everybody wants a kid to be able to walk or bike to school, so this is a this is a good win. So that's a success story that we had in the coalitions. And, and I've got a couple more examples of ways that our coalitions get involved. So this one uh, at Holspire York County, we often have uh, guest speakers. In one of the guest speakers, we had, as Dr. Keeley pointed out in an earlier slide, Letitia Holt, who is now on our leadership team from the York School District. Before that, she we heard about her and how she had 
um, had championed a food waste reduction program in her school district. So we invited her in to talk about that food waste reduction program. And it was very exciting and we shared it with other school districts. Excitingly also the, the Fort Mill School District realized uh, th that this um, would also help their school. And, and I believe they, um, I think it was already in the plan to, to do a food waste reduction of some sort, but we were able to work with the Fort Mill School District and support their application. And they were able to ultimately get funding to enhance, grow, enhance their food waste reduction program. Uh, and then with that funding that the Fort Mill School District received, they were able to hire someone to support the program. And Dr. Keeley was able to leverage that person as we rolled out the Healthy Together 5210 program in all of the district's elementary schools. So she has been a, a, a terrific contact at the schools to help roll to help roll out and support the 5210 program in, in the school district's elementary schools. So really, uh, we, we try to keep the ideas coming. We try to keep the conversation open. We try to support, support people's ideas. Uh, and, and we leverage our relationships to, 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 um, to make a difference in the schools. Our goal is to be responsive and helpful. And we also know it's very important to be targeted since schools are busy. So we, we try to focus and make sure that we're making a difference in the area that is important to the school. So as I said, I'm a parent. Many of our members are parents ourselves and involved in our school districts, our children's school districts. So we all realize it's important to work together to raise healthy children and teach them a healthy lifestyle over the long term. So, so this is, that's, those are some ways that we've engaged and worked with our school districts. So I think, I think we pointed this out earlier, but if, if you identify a shared concern or a shared health priority, then we can, we can share ideas about it, educate the community members and, and see where people are interested and we can engage them on those interests and, and support their efforts to to enhance their whatever program it is that they're doing at their school, be it a food waste reduction program or needing a sidewalk, um, you know. And, and as I said, uh, finding school teachers, staff or administrators as champions. So we have good relationships with all of the four school districts in our area. And we have been privileged to be able to part with them, partner with them and support their efforts to the best of our ability. So everyone here is the contact information. Um, if you need to get in touch with either Dr. Keeley or Liz, please use the contact information on the screen. And we'd also like to thank both you and Dave, um, Liz, for presenting um, and then being a part of the webinar series. So thank you. Now, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box and we will use the Q&A feature to answer any questions. So I'll give it a minute or two to see if we have any questions come in. Um, once again, if you have any questions, please put them um, in the Q&A feature. Charmise, I could, while they're thinking, um, I could add that, um, you know, when I talked about this school improvement councils and the CSHACs, these have required community representation. So um, these these are opportunities um, for, um, you know, coalition, if you have a local coalition um, like we, like us, these these are great um, opportunities for uh, at the grassroots level to um, you know make have your voice heard, make make suggestions, and uh, create those synergistic partnerships. Um, also, um, engaging school districts. Um, I forgot to mention that the alliance. Um, for healthier children is a program that is very strong and um, evidence-based. And um, one of the successes that we had uh, in Rock Hill School District really was that the 5210 initiative and the Alliance for a Healthier Generation dovetailed. Um, and, you know, for policy change uh, that had the same kinds of um, ideas that were um, being uh, put forward for policy change and sustainability. So um, if you have an alliance um, program in, in your area, uh, that can be a very, very good opportunity. 
Thanks, Dr. Healy. And we did get one question about the slides. Um, yes, we will send the slides out next week. And we will also have a recording of this webinar that we will send to everyone who has registered. So you will receive that information. And at this time, it looks like we don't have any other questions, but once again, you have the contact information from the panelists. So feel free to reach out to them or you can contact um, myself or Erica Ayers if you have any questions. So before we end today's webinar, we do want to leave you with a call to action. Um, the first thing like before is find your community coalition or organization or either your school district wellness committee reach out to find out who those champions are and schedule an introductory meeting. And then after that, being sure to find common ground. So what are the needs of both the community and the school? So that's our call to action for everyone who's participating on today. And we also wanted to tell you about the next and final um, webinar in this three-part series, which will be on May 25th from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. And during that webinar, we will be joined by Joanne Mender, who will be telling us about the Summer Break Cafe, which um, some of you may know as the Summer Feeding Program, um, formerly the Summer Feeding Program. So as we close, we want to thank you all once again for joining us. We do have certificates available. So if you need a certificate for participation on today's webinar, please add your name, first name, last name, and email to the chat, and we will share a certificate with you, um, and you will receive that around next week. And also, we would love your feedback on today's session. So in the chat, there is a link. If you would take a moment to complete the survey and let us know um, how you enjoyed today's session. And thank you all once again. Thank you again to my co-host, Erica, as well as our panelists, Liz and Dr. Kelly.